Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is a bit of a controversial one. It is an ongoing case that as of right now, we don't know the outcome, but I wanted to go ahead and cover this case and bring it to your attention because I truly feel like everybody is going to have a different opinion on this case and I'm really looking forward to the conversation that happens as a result. But before we get into it, I wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to Harry's for partnering with me on today's video. It's starting to get warmer here in Arizona, and it's about that time for brunches, swimming, and beach trips, and all of that. The one thing that has always been daunting about that is shaving right before because I've always suffered from horrible razor burn, which makes my legs look red and bumpy, and it's just not fun wearing a bathing suit or shorts or anything like that when my legs look like that but I don't have to worry about that anymore thanks to Harry's. Harry's five blade German engineered razor gives me the closest shave that I've ever had without razor burn, cuts, or missed spots that I used to get with other razor brands. Their super sharp razors give me the most comfortable shave that I've ever experienced, so now I don't have to dread shaving anymore. My only regret is that I didn't use them sooner because the results have been amazing. I always use their foaming shave gel because it works so well with my very sensitive skin. And unlike other brands, it's hydrating thanks to ingredients like hyaluronic acid. Trust me, the razor burn that I used to get compared to now, it is a world of difference and I can't even believe that I put up with that for so long before switching razor brands, but I am so happy that I did. The other great thing about Harry's is that they offer you a starter kit that gives you everything that you need for a close, comfortable shave. When you use my link down below, you can get their starter kit for only $5. That is a $13 value for only $5 when you use my link down below. I know I love my Harry's razors and you will too. Thank you again so much to Harry's for partnering with me on today's video and for your continued support of my channel. By supporting Harry's, you are also supporting me because it's brands like Harry's that allow me to continue making the content that I love making for you all and spreading awareness about these very important cases. Okay, so with all of that being said, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the death of Timmy Durham. William Timmy Durham Sr., who went by Tim, was 51 years old when he was stabbed to death on the evening of May 4th, 2020. Tim graduated from Vineland High School, graduating in 1988. He had a wife named Catherine, though she went by Tiffany, and the two were married for 32 years. The couple had two sons, Billy and Gage Durham. Tiffany and Tim once had owned and operated their own carpet cleaning business before Tim got a job at the State of New Jersey Department of Corrections as a senior corrections officer. He worked for the past 19 years at the South Woods State Prison in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Tim was known for liking to work on home projects, working on his yard, being outdoors, going camping, restoring old Mustangs, and dirt bike racing with his family. But most of all, beyond everything else in his life, he loved spending time with his family. His son Gage described that his dad was very laid back. It took him a lot to get angry and he was just this very chill guy, this very laid back guy who just cared about his family and enjoyed spending time with them. Those who knew Tim described that he was a role model to many people. He truly was a family man, and even those who he worked with said that his wife and his two boys came first, no matter what. Coworkers said that throughout Tim's career, he was the one guy that you could count on no matter what the situation was. Everyone from rookie officers to command staff always felt at ease during any situation that they knew Tim was involved with. Those who knew him said that Tim just had this way about him where he made everybody he came into contact with feel important and appreciated. He was just a stand-up guy in his everyday life and at his job. His family lived in a home on Thornhill Road in the town of Vineland, New Jersey. Down the street from them lived an 18-year-old teenager named Zachary Latham. Zachary was actually emancipated from his family when he was 16 years old, and some sources say that it was because his mother had passed away. When he turned 18, he had enlisted in the New Jersey National Guard. He had been married to his wife, Sarah, and the two lived together in Vineland with Zachary's grandparents. Zachary was known to be very active on TikTok. He posted a lot about himself being in the army as well as his love for cars. 
He boasted about how he owns a Corvette at 17 years old, and he is known for the fact that he likes driving very recklessly and very fast. His reckless driving started to become an issue for everybody who lived on Thornhill Road, especially the Durham family. This whole feud started way back in 2018 when Zachary was only 16 years old. During the first incident, Timmy talked to Zachary's grandparents about his reckless and dangerous driving. He would speed down, you know, the residential neighborhoods going way over the speed limit. He would rev his engine, swerve all over the streets, so it was really getting out of hand. So, after Tim talked to Zachary's grandparents, Zachary walked over to their house and apologized to Tim, saying that the dangerous driving would stop. But it didn't. In fact, it seemed to only get worse. For the following months and years, things escalated. It seemed that the more the family complained, the more reckless Zachary became. It was almost like every time they complained, he just wanted to spite them by getting worse. Classic teenager behavior, but for this specific instance, it truly can be life-threatening if someone were to be hit or someone were to be affected by his dangerous driving. Dangerous driving is not something that I take lightly and it's not something that anybody should take lightly no matter your age, whether you're 16 or 60, reckless driving is reckless and it's dangerous. It should not be taken lightly. But either way, the more the family complained about Zach and his driving, the more entertaining Zach found it and the more entertaining he found it, the less seriously he took it. And thus, the Durham family became more and more frustrated. In one incident, which took place two years later on April 6, 2020, Tiffany confronted Zachary about his speeding, asking him to slow down. Police had been called for reports of his reckless driving and rubbing his engine and just being disruptive in their quiet neighborhood. It's not clear whether the Durham family called the police in this specific incident or if it was another neighbor, but regardless, police showed up and Tiffany was upset about the whole situation. So, she went up to Zachary in his car and there were some words exchanged between the two of them and an argument ensued. And Zachary used this as an opportunity to pull out his phone and record a video for TikTok. In the video, he called her a Karen multiple times and continued instigating things. For those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody does, but Karen is sort of an insult that people will say when, you know, a woman is kind of acting crazy and kind of being hysterical for no reason, you know, throwing a fit in the grocery store, for example. Those are Karens. Um, so that's what he was calling her during this video. Here is that TikTok for you now. What are you gonna do, Karen? That's not my name, so get my name straight. Go ahead. I'll you okay, Karen? Go ahead, get my tag. Go. Get my tag, Karen. My name is not Karen, so get my name straight. Get my tag, it's okay. All because my car is loud. Three cop cars. This video ended up getting three million views over just a few days. After that, he continued posting various videos about the family and their ongoing feuds. In one video, he allegedly said that he would release their address of this Karen family if this video got over a million views, it was a different video than the one that got three million. But either way, after that, he started encouraging people to go on the street and in front of their house and start revving their engines just to sort of, you know, harass the family. In one video posted about a week before the incident, Zachary can be seen holding a gun. In that post, he commented, that is how you handle neighbors. Then after that first video got three million views, Zachary allegedly drove up to the Durham home and yelled out, hey Karen, we went viral, obviously to Tiffany. Over this month, the family tried to file complaints with the city and the courts multiple times. It was said that there were a lot of other officers and just people in that general job field, like cops and firefighters who also lived in that area. Multiple of these other people also filed complaints against Zachary for his dangerous driving, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the offices were all closed, so nothing was ever done. Over the course of the two years, nothing was done. But then everything came to a head on May 4th, 2020. According to Gage, him and his brother were riding bikes as they did every day. 
they both left the driveway with Billy a little bit ahead of Gage. They started on the streets heading towards the nearby woods to ride bikes there. I want to note that in order to, you know, leave the house, leave the driveway, and ride his bike out of the cul-de-sac, he had to ride on the street because I saw pictures of the neighborhood. I will include them if I find them again, but there aren't any sidewalks in front of the houses. So, before going on the street, as he always did, he checked to make sure that the road was clear and started heading towards the woods. As he was riding his bike, he heard a car come up behind him and start honking. So he looked behind himself and saw that Zachary's car was coming directly for him. Because of this, he had to swerve his bike onto the curb and jump off of his bike to avoid being hit by Zachary, who allegedly swerved directly at Gage with the intent of running him down. After that, Gage, who was pretty shaken up at that point, waited for Zachary to leave before he continued riding his bike into the woods to meet his brother. When he got into the woods, they rode their bikes around for a little bit, and Gage told Billy what had just happened. After riding their bikes at around 4 or 5 p.m., I believe they were riding around for about a half hour to an hour, Billy and Gage returned home for dinner. At that point, Gage said that he didn't tell his parents what happened because he didn't want to continue causing drama with Zachary or his parents, but I believe Billy did end up telling his parents because Tiffany found out about it and she was pissed. According to reports, Timmy and Tiffany knew that Zachary was out riding in his car, so they backed up Timmy's white pickup truck into the street to block Zachary's path. When Zachary drove up, Tiffany then got out of the car, now with her cell phone, to record their encounter. So just like to kind of paint the picture, they backed up the car into the street. Tiffany and Tim were both in the car. And then when they saw Zachary, she got out and so did Zachary. Then they started arguing. She first asked Zachary why he swerved at her son and tried to hit him. At that point, again, Tiffany and Zachary were out of their cars, but Timmy was still in the truck. He said, when? And Tiffany said, you don't remember? today when he was riding his bike and you swerved and pushed him against the curb. Zachary denied it at first, but he did admit to honking at him. So at the very least, we know that he drove up behind him and was honking at him to get him to look in that direction. So still harassing him, still driving pretty dangerously, but he didn't admit that he actually went and tried to hit him or drive him off the road. But Tiffany grew angrier and angrier, so she says, It's on video, so get your shit straight, you little punk. I did see in some sources that the whole thing of him getting run off the road was captured on a neighbor's surveillance camera, or at least part of it was, but I'm not 100% sure because I watched some of the trial and I didn't see that mentioned yet. Either way, Zachary said, get out of my face, as he swatted at Tiffany, hitting her in the face. And again, some sources say that she ended up with a black eye. Other sources say that he hit her multiple times, like once in the face and once in the back or the chest. It's a little bit convoluted there. It's a little bit confusing. This was captured on video, but I don't think where he actually struck her, I don't think that was captured on video. She responded with, did you just hit me? And then Zachary jumped into his car and then drove off to his house, which is located about 500 feet down the road. Then Tiffany jumps back in the car with Timmy and she told Tim to call the police. The whole family ended up witnessing this entire altercation because the brothers went outside to see what was going on. So after seeing Zachary punch their mother in the face, Gage and Billy also went to follow Zachary back to his house, riding their bikes behind Zachary driving his car, while Timmy and Tiffany drove in their truck. By the time Gage and Billy got to Zachary's house, that's when they saw that Zachary had run inside, but his wife, Sarah, was standing at the end of the driveway. At that point, Gage, Billy, and Timmy were now all at Zachary's house, while Tiffany was also at the house, but she was sort of staying like in the street by the curb. Either way, they all walked up to the driveway, but Sarah, who was standing at the end of the driveway still, said to them, I promise you, you better back up because you're not going to like what Zachary is bringing out. Once Timmy had arrived and Zachary came out of the house, he was brandishing a knife and a taser, telling the family to get off of his property. But 
Billy pursued Zachary first, with Timmy walking up behind him. As they're walking up, Zachary started swinging the knife and the taser. But after that, after that initial hit, all hell breaks loose and everybody starts fighting. The fight was between Zachary and then Zachary had two of his friends over and then Billy, Timmy, and Gage, who Gage was sort of standing behind his brother and his father, and I don't think he was totally involved at first. He was sort of watching it starting to happen before he got involved. Then Tiffany obviously did not get involved. She's sort of standing at the end of the driveway. She might have been following them up to see what was going on and to watch the fight going on, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know that she didn't get involved and neither did Sarah. The fight started in the middle of the driveway, but ended up in the garage between the two cars. Zachary first slices Timmy on his arm, I believe two times. It could have been more, it could have been three times. Then you can hear the taser firing repeatedly. Everybody in the video is just screaming with Tiffany begging the men to stop fighting. Someone ended up getting the taser from Zach, but the fight continued. Then Timmy stood up and he can be seen with blood all over both of his arms, and I did see this in the video. Then he turns to one of his sons, who was in a headlock by one of Zach's friends. Then Zach stabs Timmy in the back and again to the right underarm area. That moment is a bit confused because it wasn't really captured on camera. Things were really blurry at that point. Sarah was the one recording and things kind of got crazy and there's a lot that you couldn't see, but that moment will be important. But now, after this entire fight, Timmy was lying in the garage after having been stabbed multiple times. Again, this entire altercation was recorded and Zachary posted the video to his TikTok account. Now, the video has since been taken down, but Court TV did show it as a part of the trial. I don't know if the entire video was in the trial, but I saw like a good majority of the fight. In that video, like I said, it's pretty difficult to tell what's going on, but to me, it looks like both Tim and Billy are confronting Zach and he starts swinging his deadly weapons. You can again also hear the taser going off multiple times. It's been sort of argued whether or not he actually tased anybody. Gage says that his father was tased by Zach. Zach says that he didn't actually tase anybody, but you can hear it going off multiple times. And I feel like he wouldn't just be like threatening at that point. If he's stabbing someone, he's probably also, it's not out of the question that they're also maybe tasing them. So I personally think that he was using the taser. You can tell that even after he's stabbed multiple times, Tim keeps going. It is hard to tell whether he continued fighting or if he was just trying to get his son off of the ground. To me, it looks like he was trying to get his son off of the ground who was also continuing to fight. Literally so much is going on. People are all fighting each other. Whether Tim was actually trying to continue fighting or not, he was still in the middle of it. So to be fair, it does look like the Durhams are not giving up for quite a while, even as Zachary is using lethal force. But like I said, after the initial part of the fight, it's really difficult to tell what exactly is going on. So the part that I told you earlier is what witnesses say happened. It is hard to trust witnesses though, because they were involved in the fight. And obviously it's not unbiased, it's very biased to whatever side they're on. If they're a part of the Durham family, they're going to say whatever probably sounds best for them, whether they're trying to or not. Same thing for Zachary's side. So it's hard to know exactly what happened when we don't have, you know, a full video of the incident because it does get kind of crazy. If you want to watch the video, it will be listed down below. Just a warning that it is very intense to watch and it's definitely uncomfortable, but if you do want to see it, it will be listed down below. You will be able to see a good bit of the fight, but most of it is kind of just like, you know, when someone's running and they're holding the camera and it's just like waving everywhere, that's kind of how it is, but you can hear the taser, you can hear people screaming. It's a very intense video. Either way, immediately after the fight, there were several 911 calls made, one of which was made by Zachary himself. In the call, Zachary said that there was blood 
all over the place. He said that he was beat up real bad. He said that people showed up with guns and started attacking him. He said that there were like 10 people who were all stomping on him and crushed his windpipe. Here is that 911 call. I won. Where's your emergency? There's blood all over the place. I just got assaulted and jumped. Right, are you the one that got stabbed? No, I'm, no, that was the other victim, but I got beat up really bad and I had blood all over me. Alright, so you're at 2986 Thornhill as well? Yes. Alright, and you want an ambulance? Um, yeah, um, I don't know. Alright, the person, or the person, the people who did it to you, are they still there? They, they, they came with trucks, came on my property with guns, and then when I uh, fought them off, they drove away. Alright, well, how are you injured, sir? Um, my windpipe was crushed in and I got stomped out and choked by like 10 people. Alright, and where are you bleeding from? Um, I don't know, there's blood all over me, I don't even know if it's cut, there's blood all over our garage. Okay. Uh, the they person came in and said they had guns and they were going to kill us and they came in my garage and attacked all of us. There were four people. Okay. Hold on one second for the police, okay? Okay. To clarify, I do want to make it known that the Durhams did not show up with guns. There were some allegations that they threatened to bring guns, but they didn't actually have any. They were completely unarmed, no weapons whatsoever. It's just funny because I knew a guy like this in high school who would totally over-exaggerate everything. And again, I am trying to be fair. I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. And as we get throughout the video, I will tell more of both sides. But I do think that Zachary here is trying to paint a narrative I get that he was involved in the fight. I'm sure it was traumatic for him. I'm sure he was beat up pretty good. But him saying that like 10 people were all stomping on him, that is a clear exaggeration. He knew there weren't 10 people there. He knew that he wasn't being beat up as badly as he's saying because he knew that he used a lot more force than anybody used on him. And he failed to mention that in his 911 call. So... That's just something I want to point out now as we go throughout the video. After the fight, I believe Tiffany drove the three boys home in their pickup truck and Timmy was taken to the hospital. Then police showed up to Zachary's house by 7.48 p.m. When police got there, it was a very chaotic scene. I will try to include bits and pieces of the body cam footage, again, if there's no like copyright issues, but basically everyone there is injured from the fight. None of them wants to get up. None of them wants to talk. They're all just sitting there injured. Down on, down on the ground. Down on the ground. Down on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Keep your hands where I can see them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need an ambulance. What's your problem? I have a, I have a head injury. They came in our kitchen and attacked us. Put your gloves on. I need an ambulance. Can I grab my head? Where's his head? You. You in the blue shirt. Yeah. Turn your head so your face isn't in the dirt. Where are you hurt? I need an ambulance. I'm not hurt. You're not hurt. Whose blood is that? The, the guy that attacked okay. us. Okay. Stay down on the ground, but don't bury your face. Where are you hurt? I popped my, I popped my shoulder. Okay. Right. Stay down on the ground and do not move. All of them talking. I have video proof. They came on the property. Yeah. We told him to back away. Where I'm at, I only have one. I got two. Two? What's his? I got uh, two injuries where the accused is at. I got a, a head injury and a shoulder injury. One of them had grabbed me by my neck and had his brother touch me to face. It's all right. Just, just listen to them, Zach. I am. I didn't do just anything. Do, just listen to them. Listen to what they say. Glove up. Paramedics took Zachary to the hospital for his injuries, which did include a concussion. Then Timmy was sent to the hospital for his injuries as well. However, Tim did not make it. He was stabbed several times with the fatal injury being a puncture to his lung. Shortly after this, Zachary was then arrested and charged with first degree aggravated manslaughter, two counts of second degree assault and various weapons offenses. Tiffany was also arrested and she was charged with simple assault and criminal trespass. And then Billy and Gage were also charged with aggravated assault and trespassing. After the bond hearing, Zachary was released but his social media activity did not stop there. 
After being released, he continued posting and interacting with commenters about the situation and about the trouble he was continuing to have with the Durham family. Some commenters asked why he needed a public defender if he had fancy cars, and he replied with, why waste 50k when I have video proof? I could damn near represent myself, lol. Then a commenter called him a murderer, and to this he replied, I have licensed firearm carriers in my house. If my intent was murder, they would have all died. He walked in my house with four other people after I warned him. During the same time, one commenter on a video of Zachary's actually posted the Durham's address, and obviously, when the family found out about it, they were afraid for their safety. It's not confirmed whether it was Zachary who posted the address. It's thought that it might have been because you can easily just make a new account and comment on a video if you want to. So he didn't necessarily like get in trouble for that, but someone posted their address. The family started to notice increased traffic around their house. Tiffany once said that she saw a car stopped in front of her house recently where the driver just sat there for a while. And then once they saw that Tiffany came out with her phone and was recording them, that's when the car drove off. Family members have also received numerous phone call hangups where the other person just calls and then says nothing. So Tiffany went to the court to tell them that she is afraid for her safety. So she filed a motion to revoke Zachary's release due to this behavior. But before the motion could be heard, Zachary was actually arrested in Fort Myers, Florida for allegedly threatening a driver. He had been carrying a pellet gun that looked very similar to an AK-47 rifle in his car. People have these guns because they don't necessarily function as a real gun, but they look exactly like them. So people will use them and there's no way the person on the other side can know if it's just a pellet gun or if it's real. He brandished this weapon after getting into a confrontation with another driver. He allegedly tried ramming his car into the other individual's car and then confronted them with this pellet gun. So, he was charged with two counts of aggravated assault in Florida. I also want to note that all charges against Tiffany and her two sons have since been dropped, but there hasn't really been an explanation as to why. We just know that they have been dropped. The trial for now second-degree manslaughter is currently ongoing, and he pleads not guilty, saying that this was actually an act of self-defense. But the prosecution in this case argued that after years of being harassed by Zach, the family was fed up. They said that the police were doing absolutely nothing to help them, so they felt like they needed to take action. So, that is when they decided to do the whole setup with pulling the truck into the road to block Zachary and allow them to talk to him and confront him about swerving and trying to hit Gage with the car. That can literally be like attempted murder. Then, as we know, Zachary swatted at Tiffany, hitting her in the face and allegedly leaving her with a black eye. I say allegedly because it's been reported, but I'm not 100% sure. According to the Durham's lawyer, it was Zachary who provoked the fight after he tried hitting Gage with his car and after hitting Tiffany in the face. Their lawyer argued that Zachary lured the family to his house, but when they pulled up, they were unarmed, unprepared, but Zachary came out with a knife and a taser and some reports even say that he had two knives with him. They argue that Sarah was recording the incident because it was their intent to provoke a fight and then post the video to TikTok to get more followers and to get TikTok famous. From their own actions, they did post that video online. I do just want to pause here. Some people can, you know, argue about their intent from posting that video online doesn't necessarily mean that they lured them there, could just be that they happened to get this video and they posted it online because it was a crazy video. But in my opinion, if you truly feared for your life and you truly went through something this traumatic, such as three men coming on your property and you were forced to defend yourself and you did absolutely nothing else to provoke it, why would you want to record it and then post it online? I get recording it so you have proof of what happened. Like, if you know that something might happen to you, you know, I might put my phone on record too, just in case. But for you to post a video like that online, 
it really just rubs me the wrong way. Again, you can say that this didn't happen the way he wanted it to, that things got out of control and it wasn't Zachary's fault, he was just defending himself, but why post that video online for your thousands of subscribers to see? That just really gives me the ick. Then going back to this whole situation, when the fight ensued, the fatal stab wound that occurred to Timmy was as he was turning around to go tend to his son, allegedly. This shows that it wasn't just because he was defending himself, he intentionally stabbed Timmy somewhere that he knew, allegedly, would be fatal. So, the Durham's lawyer also argued that Zachary shouldn't just be charged with reckless manslaughter, but first-degree murder because, quote, his actions weren't just reckless, but purposeful, citing ongoing harassments, threats, encouraging others to harass the family, and use of multiple weapons on the day of the killing. They also argued that him being charged with that other assault in Florida should be allowed in court because it shows a history of that kind of behavior, of provoking fights and harassing others. Even after killing somebody, whether it was justified as self-defense or not, he continued provoking fights with other people on the road. He continued driving recklessly and ramming into other people's vehicles and then threatening them with guns. Again, the other person that's being threatened does not know that that is not a real gun. There's no way that they could know because they are specifically made to look like real guns. Then he continued posting on social media about it and he continued harassing the Durham family as if losing their father was not enough. So to me, if I'm attacked by somebody and I truly feared for my life in that moment and I was like, I'm so small compared to these men, they all outweigh me by 300 pounds, they're coming after me and I'm terrified to the point that I felt like I had to use lethal force to defend myself, I'm not just going to go and then keep harassing them. The two sons are bigger than Zachary. He said that he feared them. So why go out and start harassing them again the second you're released? If you truly are afraid of them, you want to stay away from them. If I'm afraid of someone and I'm afraid that they're going to hurt me and I had to defend myself against them, I'm not just going to go seek that person again to continue harassing them. That's just not going to happen. The family lawyer also talked about how people have been coming by the house. Again, Zachary isn't allowed to go to their house as a condition of his bail, but they've said that Zachary's associates have been driving by their house and revving their engines and continuing to harass them. Now, again, the defense argued that Zachary was ambushed, that he feared for his safety due to the four individuals coming at him on his own property after he asked them to leave. So, he came out with his own weapons to defend himself and his own property. They argued that Zachary only did this because he was defending himself against a group of men who were bigger and stronger than him. He had no choice but to defend himself. Sarah warned them to stay off their property. They started charging at Zachary, as you can see in the video. Zachary asks them to leave his property multiple times, and they don't. They continue pursuing him. So, as a result, Zachary felt the need to defend himself and use lethal force because he feared for his life. When you are talking about a self-defense case where somebody is murdered, you have to justify the use of lethal force. It's not enough to fear that someone might hurt you. You have to fear for your life. You have to feel that you were in a position where the only way to defend yourself was to kill that other person. If it's proven that you could have done something else to defend yourself, then that's not enough to argue killing somebody because of self-defense. So, the prosecution argued that if he truly was in fear for his life, that he should have retreated inside. If he truly thought that his life was in danger, then why did he go outside on his property to confront the men on his property? Why was he so confrontational? And I get that there were three men coming at him, but they forget to mention that there were also two friends there, so it was a three-on-three -three type of thing. They try to pose it as, like, these three men coming at this one guy, which it, it was, it was. They were all there for Zachary. They weren't there for the other friends, but he did have those other friends to defend him, and they were also involved with the fight, so it's not like these three men were just, like, 
pounding on this one, you know, teenager who did nothing wrong and they were just, you know, beating the crap out of him for no reason, there were two other people there as well. And again, Tiffany and Sarah were not throwing hands in all of this. The defense likes to say, like, Tiffany was totally involved. But if you want to say Tiffany was involved, then you have to say that Sarah was just involved because she was recording, she was there, she wasn't necessarily stopping any of it. How could she when someone's holding these weapons? But if you want to say that Tiffany was a part of it, you have to say that Sarah was also a part of it. So that kind of goes both ways. But those are really the main arguments on both sides. Prosecution say that they were lured there so that he could record a fight and get TikTok famous. The defense said that he's innocent in all of this and that these men just came in hot and that they're much bigger and stronger than him and that he was in fear of his life and he felt that the only way that he could defend himself was by using lethal force. As of the time that I'm recording this, which is about a week before it'll go live, we may hear the verdict by the time it's posted and if we do, I will update you guys in the description. But for now, my opinion on all of this is that Zachary is just a very hard person to feel bad for. He definitely provoked this family for years and I do honestly believe the story of him trying to run Gage off of the road. I get that there isn't a video of this, but I think that Zachary in his 18-year-old dumb teenager mind thought that it would be funny. I don't think that he really thought that Gage could be seriously injured by running him off of the road like that. I do think that he did it to provoke the family again, again, not thinking that anything would happen other than him getting a good Karen moment. I don't think that he thought like, I'm gonna hit this, you know, guy, I'm gonna hit him and knock him off his bike and hopefully kill him or hopefully injure him. I don't think that he thought that. I think that he went into it thinking that he was gonna scare him piss him off, make him scared, and get another good reaction. But I also do think that he did kind of lure the family to his house. I do think that he wanted a confrontation because, again, we don't have proof, like, concrete proof that he tried to run Gage off of the road because, again, he says he didn't, but I don't think the family would have gotten that upset if he didn't do anything. If all he did was drive by, rub his engine, and honk his horn, they might have been upset, but I don't think they would have been as upset as they would have been if, you know, he didn't actually try to run him off the road because that's very scary. If you are a teenager or if you're a young adult and you think that kind of thing is funny, it's not. It's life-threatening. You can hurt someone or kill someone. Don't do that type of stupid thing. Either way, I do think he lured the family to the house. I think he wanted a confrontation. I think he brought the weapons out to make himself look tougher but I honestly don't think he expected the Durhams to fight back as hard as they did. They had been pretty complicit this entire time. All they really did was kind of yell at him, complain, you know, have their Karen moments, do whatever. So I think that's what he was expecting. But when they didn't back down, he resulted to deadly force. At the end of the day, I don't think that any of this would have happened had Zach not chased Gage down with his car. I think that reckless manslaughter is an appropriate charge. Again, I don't think that he brought the dad there or lured him there with the intent of murdering him, but I do think that he wanted the family to come. I think he knew that if he did this, that the family would probably either go to their property or would stop him. I think he knew that they were going to react. That's why I think he did it. And I think Sarah was ready to record. And I do believe that he wanted to get a video to post it and get views. It's one of those social media phenomenons where someone will go viral on TikTok for one video. Again, let's say it's a Karen video. So now that is what you are known for. You are TikTok famous for your Karen content. So people want to keep making content that is related to what they went viral for. So they keep trying to find things to record. So me, for example, I started a true crime channel because that is what I wanted to talk about whether I went big or not. I posted videos on this one topic and that's what I'm gonna stick to because that is what I wanna report on, that is what I think needs to be reported on, etc. Whereas some people on TikTok, let's say I post a video of my dog and it goes viral, people love my dog, I'm gonna keep posting videos of my dog. I'm not just gonna suddenly like switch to true crime. I didn't choose to go viral for the dog video, but other people liked it, so I'm going to keep doing it. So that is what I think happened here. People will go viral for one type of video, so they'll keep the feud going, for example, so that they have some content. They'll keep harassing them. They'll keep doing things to provoke them so that they get that good content so they can keep posting videos and keep talking about it. 
because again, he went viral for this one Karen video. And then he kept getting views because all he did was talk about the Karens. All he did was talk about his feud with the family and people were invested. People get invested to that type of thing. So I think he kept provoking them on purpose because I do think he wanted a fight. I think he wanted a video of him brandishing the weapons, the annoying Karen family to, you know, run away and backing down, getting scared so that he could laugh at them on TikTok. Or I think that maybe he wanted to provoke them and make them look like they were the ones that were provoking things. Again, when we see videos like this, when we see a Karen video, we only see the one side. There are times that it's like obvious that like this person is just having a meltdown in public for no reason. But like, for example, if I saw the video that he posted on his TikTok and knew absolutely no background, I might think that she's just being a Karen because he said, oh, just because I was rubbing my engine. But what he doesn't say is that he's been doing this for two years he drives recklessly and he's been harassing them. So you don't always know what's going on behind the scenes, but I think that the motive here could have been to make them look like they're constantly provoking, to make them look bad. I think that that was what he wanted with this entire thing. So my final thoughts. Do I think that he lured them to murder anybody? No. But do I think this was purely self-defense? No. There are wrongs on both sides. Obviously, the Durhams should not have pursued as hard as they did, but Zachary also should not have brought out deadly weapons and used deadly force when it was not needed. I do not believe that he was in fear of his life. I think he knew that these men could give him a good beating, but I do not think that he thought that they were going to kill him. I do not think that deadly force was needed. He said himself, literally, in TikTok comments that if he wanted them to die, he had guns. So I think that if he truly, truly feared for his life, if he ran inside and got weapons because he was like, these people are here with guns, they're gonna kill me, I'm afraid for my life, you know, my life is in danger, I think he would have armed himself. Like he said he would. He literally said that himself. If I wanted them to die, I would have had guns. But he didn't do that. So I don't think that he was in fear for his life and I don't think that this needed deadly force. Some of you might disagree. I hope people disagree. I hope there's a good conversation. But no matter what side you're on, that is my opinion. Again, I think there were wrongs on both sides. I don't think it's first degree murder or even second degree murder. I do think it's reckless manslaughter because of this fight that necessarily didn't have to go as far as it did. It didn't go as far as it did only because of Zach. Both parties made it go as far as it did but Zach was the one who used the deadly force when it was not needed. But at the end of the day, no matter what side you're on, no matter what you think happened, it's definitely a sad case because nobody deserves what happened to Tim. I feel for him about being harassed all that damn time with the courts doing absolutely nothing. I would be annoyed too if there was some guy driving recklessly down my street. I walk my dog on that street. Other people walk their dogs. People have children. And if there was someone going like 50 down my 25 mile an hour residential neighborhood, I would also be pissed and I would also be afraid for my dog, my own, and my neighbor's safety. And even if they were just going in front of my house and revving their engine all the time, Imagine that, like you're watching my video and someone's just out there revving their engine just to annoy me. It's super immature and obviously, once again, teenagers are stupid. I was a stupid teenager, you were probably a stupid teenager, you were a stupid teenager, I'll say that because everybody's stupid when they're a teenager, but it did not need to go to this level, it did not need to get to this point that somebody's life was lost because of what Zachary was doing. And again, I probably seem biased against Zachary. I've said multiple times that the Durham family did not need to confront him that the way that they did, but I also think that none of it would have happened if Zachary had just not been an immature, you know, little annoyance to everybody and was driving recklessly. And again, I say an annoyance, but I'm also very serious when I say that dangerous driving and reckless driving is life-threatening. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't tolerate anybody else doing it. You shouldn't tolerate being in the car when someone is driving like that. Absolutely not. It is life-threatening. And I'm, you might be thinking that I'm a Karen now for saying that, like I suck the fun out of things, but it's, it's not fun. It's not funny. It's not cool. Nobody cares about you revving your engine. Nobody thinks that you're cooler than anybody else. Everyone just wishes that you would stop. 
That is what it is. No one thinks you're cool because you're speeding down the road and putting other people's lives in danger. That's not cool. Nobody thinks you're cool for doing that. And it's actually crazy to me that there's still like 30, 40, 50 year olds out there who still do this because they think that they're cooler than everybody else and that driving and weaving through traffic and causing accidents or almost causing accidents is cool and funny. It's not. That's all I'll say about that. I know I get on a tangent about a lot of things, but this is something I feel very strongly about. This whole case also makes me wonder about the broader picture of unnecessary violence that probably happened during the beginning stages of the pandemic because people knew that there was no one to stop them. So it's just a whole sad situation all around. The family lost their father, a husband, a son, a brother, a member of society who is doing good by others. But because of a stupid fight, because of a teenager who could not just listen and drive recklessly somewhere else because of a teenager who wanted good content. A fight happened and somebody lost their life. Again, both sides bear responsibility for it, but it was a stupid fight. It shouldn't have happened. And I hope that this can at least serve as a little bit of a lesson for the rest of us if we're ever in a situation like this that Violence is never the answer, and as cheesy as that sounds, it's true. Violence is never the answer, especially to a situation like this. But that is where I'm going to end the video. That's- I will get off my soapbox now. But either way, I really want to know what you all think about the whole situation. Do you think that this was a murder? Do you think that he lured them to his house so that he could murder one of them? Or do you think that he lured them there just to get this fight on video? Do you think it truly was self-defense? Do you think that he is innocent in all of this and that the Durhams are the one that provoked this? Let me know any thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Also, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. I do keep the most up to date with any case that I cover on Twitter, so make sure you go ahead and check out my Twitter. Also, make sure you head to Harry's and grab your starter kit for only $5 when you use my link down below. If you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!